first into the tank tonight is Edwina, who wants to make one of life's most amazing moments a whole lot better. My business is something that I believe every woman, every expecting parent should have access to. Thank you, Sharks, so much for having me. My name's Edwina Sharrick. I come from regional Tamworth, an awesome town in New South Wales, and I am the founder of Birthbeat. I'm a registered midwife, mother of two, and now a CEO of a company. And I'm here to ask for $200,000 for 10% in my company. So let me tell you a little bit about why Birthbeat came about and what it is we actually do. When I was pregnant with my own daughter, Polly, I didn't actually do antenatal classes. I believe because I'm a midwife, I'm gonna know what to do. How silly was I? <laughs> it made me realise, had I been more educated, I would have been more empowered in that experience. And my husband wouldn't have been as scared. <laughs> it was then that I found out that 41% of maternity units have closed in Australia in the last 15 years. We have 300,000 births in Australia. A lot of those in rural, regional and remote Australia. So I thought that's not good enough. So I created my own classes. So in November last year, Birthbeat launched online. It's an online portal that has over 14 hours of simple to watch videos, right from prenatal yoga through to what to expect in labour, how do you know when you're in labour, what to pack, through to how to breastfeed your baby, change a nappy, safely swaddle, safely sleep. Since going online, we've experienced huge success. We've got a scalable model now to get out to all of Australia and potentially the world. Thanks very much, Edwina. So you're looking for 200k at a $2 million valuation? 10%. I am. Edwina. So um, you're a midwife. How many babies have you delivered? Oh, hundreds. Hundreds? Right? Hundreds. I'm not actually a clinical midwife now. Okay. I've resigned from my clinical position to focus 100% on birth beat. That's really great. I That'll... love people who leave their jobs and focus 100% on their business. <laughs> it's a really? good thing, isn't it, Doctor? It really? is a good That's thing. Amazing. It's amazing. fantastic. That's great. So you've got a real passion for this stuff, haven't you? I sure do. This is a genuine product that improves the experience. So what I teach my women is it's about being educated, understanding the process, which removes the fear. And I see that women actually birth better and have a more positive experience or a positive outcome if they're educated. So Edwina, tell us how it works. How does it work? Oh yeah, yeah. can I show you around the portal? Sure, yeah. Would you sure, like yeah. to have That's a look? A good idea. So, okay. <laughs> Well, this is the epidural exercise. That sounds like fun. So many people don't understand when they say, I'm going to have an epidural, the process that's involved. Let's not kid ourselves. You're not the first one to put birthing classes online. No, that's right. There are some companies that do it. What is unique about Birthbeat is that I'm actually a registered midwife. It's obstetric endorsed. So we've had four obstetricians go through the program. Plus, we offer prenatal yoga through to the breastfeeding consultant, so it's all packaged into this one-stop shop. What does your husband think about the idea of you giving up your full-time job and starting a business? Look, my husband's a very patient man, oh, thankfully. That's good. Um, what does because he do? he's an engineer. He's the numbers analytical brain. Edwin. An engineer. So did he did he engineer the two million dollar valuation, or do you have some mathematics behind that? No, Can I do have some. I was going to say I do have some mathematics behind that. Um, okay, so the unit is two hundred ninety-seven dollars to get the entire modules. Yep. So fourteen all, hours all 14 of videos. Hours. Yep. I get two hundred and forty dollars profit per unit. We've sold sixty-nine units, so we have nineteen thousand dollars. I really see this as, you know, maybe lower the price and then subscribe going forward. You know, what happens with the terrible twos? What happens with the one-year-old? So you can keep them on there forever. I actually have a plan. So my email system is quite sophisticated. I can know what date of birth, so then I know four months later that, hey, we're looking at starting solid, so now's the time to engage with my customer again. Yes. And say, you need to know what to do if your baby chokes. Which leads into a subscription model. Yeah. Which then, you know, which is, you know, God, if you can get that one right. Yeah. That's, um... Um... What are you mumbling at? What's your plan to take this forward? I'm very excited about some potential contracts that are coming up. We have a 50-unit trial signed with one of Australia's largest banks to provide this to their employees in part of their corporate wellness package. That corporate bank employs 55,000 employees. Oh, very good. 
We are also deep in discussion with HCF for Birthbeat to be the preferred provider for their online platform. So is HCF talking about incorporating it into one of their programs? Is it? Yes. So it... And so how big is the HCF population, the HCF? They have 6,000 births a year. Do you notice I've not said anything yet? He does a lot of talking, doesn't he? I'm going to say something one day. It's like he thinks that none of it, other of us can have this conversation. No, exactly. Edwina. <coughs> Naomi, have you got something to say? Yes, hello, Edwina. So, so just... Sorry. Quickly, well, I was in the middle of a question at the same time. No, you choked. You can have it next, OK? No, no, so, here we go. So with Edwina, respect to HCF, with, it's with, my with, turn. With respect to HCF Catalyst, what did they invest in? What's their option? I can't hear either of you, sorry. I'm going to keep You've talking until I get my question because I'm getting tired of these. Both my questions over. Platform. And I'm going to go blah, 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 and I'm going to interrupt the entire thing. I feel like I'm talking to my children. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's a very good observation. Yeah. Edwina. Um, I know Naomi's desperate to talk to you. Naomi, sorry. I'm patient. You no, sometimes you're not. You, you often demonstrate you're not patient, so it's all right. <laughs> I'm patient. The reason why often we need to be as investors is because it doesn't happen in the near term and it might be yep. a long play. See, the thing we don't net yet know about your business yep. is what it's going to cost to acquire a customer yep. to get the growth that you need. So what are you spending on marketing? Each couple receives a book. It's posted in the mail. They also get a little bag of goodie bags and then that's hand posted to them. Do you have a marketing expense above the line? Not yet. What I have done is an online campaign. With that is two videos. Those two videos, one on Instagram, one on Facebook. One's been viewed 52,000 times, one's been viewed 64,000 times. So I'm still struggling to, to make the big leap from, from $19,000 to your $2 million valuation. Yep. Give me the number that we think we're going to see in the next 12 months. 2020, I want to be a $5 million business, and I will be. <laughs> Based on? That we're going to sign two corporates that are both six-figure licences, so they will buy their licences. So give me, give me a number that you probably will hit on a revenue line for the next 12 months. I expect us to be 500,000 in the next 12 months. OK. I'm going to tell you where I'm at. First of all, well done. I mean, you are the authentic face of, of uh, positive birth experiences in Australia. I think that's great. I can't say I'm ever going to be a, a user of your product. <laughs> It's not an area where I feel I can add a huge amount of value. I wish you well, but I'm out. Thank you very much. So Edwina, I love what you're doing, especially with a focus on rural and regional Australia. Yeah. Um, I think you're already evolving your strategic partnerships in the right direction. So I don't think you need any of us. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Good luck. Thanks, Glenn. But I'm out, Edwina. Thank you. Glenn and I are out, three of you left. I think you've done an amazing job with getting a minimum viable product. What I don't see is the fact that you can scale the infrastructure that you've got to justify your valuation. So for this investment, I'm out. Thank you very much, Nan. Well, when you look at investing, part of that, we invest in the founders and you're great. And what you've done is fantastic. Entrepreneurs, you know, like I really identify with them. I love what you're doing, especially from regional Australia and for regional Australia. I think he's in. It sounds um, like it. <sighs> I, I think I'm confused. So I've never been to a anything natal class in my life. Oh, and you've got the youngest babies. Not something I'm dreadfully proud of, but um, hey, yeah, the baby's are healthy. I'm still married, it's all good. Um, so I don't quite get this. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I can't see your way towards the numbers where you're going to get close to this. Look, I, I think in order just to, for us to leave here sometime this year, I'm, I'm going to go out. Okay, I thank can't you make so much, Steve. I really, really do wish you all the best. So, four sharks are out, Janine's left. You, um, you've been doing your business long, uh, but you haven't been doing this business long. You are authentic, though. 
You are the real deal. You have the credibility to come out and be an authority in this space. Are you going to make an offer or are we just teasing you? Midwife Edwina has started a business selling online birthing classes with plans to expand her range into the early childhood years. But with four sharks out, Janine is her last hope. You, um, <sighs> been doing your business long, uh, but you haven't been doing this business long. You are authentic, though. You are the real deal. You have the credibility to come out and be an authority in this space. Oh, God. Is she going to make an offer or are we just teasing? Have you seen the Muppets? Yeah, there's two old guys that sit at the thing and just wing and carry on. <laughs> it's these two. Seriously, I it's miss these. picking. <laughs> come on, come on. I'll make you an offer. Thank you, Janine. There ah, you go. This is good. I think because you're just getting going. Uh, 200000 for 20% is too much at this point. I will give you $100,000 for 20% and a $100,000 loan. OK. What are you going to do? I would absolutely love to take well, Janine's. Oh, oh, thank you very much. Wow, that was easy. <laughs> thank, thank you. Thank you so much, Naomi. Thank you. Really thank great. You. Really thank great you. pitch. So all the best. Fantastic. Well done. Thank you so much for your time. That's and I great. genuinely think we are going to make such an impact for women in Australia. We will. Thank you. Well, thank well you. Done. Bye. <laughs> Very impressive young lady. Gee, I liked her. It's amazing, that was amazing. My heart is like going, I seriously think she's about 220 beats per minute. She ticked all the boxes. Oh, wait. Articulate, clear vision. Confident. Done the work. She is the real deal. She makes me excited about young entrepreneurs. My business is the fourth business that I've started. Some of the other ones weren't as successful as this, but I know that my business now is going to make the sharks go crazy. Steve, you're so nasty. <laughs> OK, when you're ready. Hi, Janine, Naomi, Steve, Andrew and Glenn. My name is Jake and I'm the founder of Coconut Bowls. Today I'm asking you for $300,000 in exchange for 10% of my business. <laughs> Every year, billions of coconut shells are discarded and burned as waste. We reclaim these shells and turn them into these beautiful bowls that people love eating from. Every single day, hundreds of our customers are sharing photos of them using our bowls on social media. And this amount of user-generated content and exposure has allowed us to grow without focusing on paid marketing. After selling our first coconut bowl in January 2016, we've now sold well over 100,000 units. <laughs> nice. While our main focus has been selling online, our products are used and sold in hundreds of cafes and retail stores around the world. Wow. In our first year of trading, we turned over $200,000. OK, good job. Last year, we grew by more than 500% to a revenue of almost $1.2 million. Whoa. And this year, our organic growth is forecasted to 
pushed beyond $3 million. Holy Jesus, Lord. I believe that there's never been a better time to be a profit with purpose business. That's us. And with your help, we can make sustainability sexy. Wow. Thank you. Go, Jake. Well, congratulations. Great pitch. Just to summarise, Jake, you were looking for $300,000 for 10%. So you're valuing your business at $3 million. Yes, correct. It's not a bad valuation for a brand new business, but yep. your, your sales are impressive. So it seems to me you've almost started a community and the coconut bowls happens to simply be the product around that community. Is that how you see it? That's exactly right. I started, obviously, the Coconut Bowls Instagram page. I then created an Instagram page called Vegan Bowls and Smoothie Bowls because that's what people were creating in our product. Our Coconut Bowl branded account has over 200,000 followers. We're on Facebook, we're also on YouTube, Pinterest and Twitter and we are Coconut Bowls on all of those platforms. Let me show you yeah. what people basically do with these Coconut Bowls. Yeah. I like candles. Is that a candle? That's a candle. It feels very Bali, doesn't it? It is. Well, we actually began in Bali. I came across a similar product but it was being sold as like a souvenir to tourists. Yep. But I thought it was actually just better as a raw shell. So right. um, I had a guy make them for me, took them home in my suitcase and began selling them. So they're not manufactured in Bali now though, are they? No, so we actually reclaim them from coconut farms in Vietnam. We pay them to basically sort them by the size and the quality that we need. And then we take them to our, our workshop where I employ local craftspeople to turn them into the bowls. G'day, Jake. How are you doing? Good, Steve. How are you? Yeah, good, thanks. Hey, um, what does it cost you to produce one of these bowls? A couple of dollars. What do you sell one for, mate? We sell them for $12.95 retail. OK, right. If you're a really good entrepreneur, you've already looked at the next 12 months. Mm -hmm. What's the real profit for the next 12 months after paying yourself a salary? I believe $600,000. Truly, and what are you paying yourself? $80,000. OK, and you've got how many team members? I've been mindful and I've hired mainly contractors. That's basically why I'm pitching for the money. I think that it's time to build a team around me of people who believe in my product and my vision. Excellent. Jake, I have to be honest, you went from a joke to someone something serious. Because <laughs> <laughs> when I sat here, I went, coconut bowls, really? But wow, super impressive for such a short period of time, so congratulations. So with that in mind, I'd like to offer you $300,000 for 28%. Poor, kicks it off. You the only shareholder? Yes, I own 100% of the business. I'll give you $300,000 for 25%. It's the community I'm interested in and you. I think you're really onto something. I'll throw an offer at you based on the fact that I do know this space. I've spent three years reinventing myself so I really? can support people like you. And you have my 100% focus as a, an investor and a supporter and a mentor because I don't have a day job anymore. But he, he also spends a lot of time on a fishing boat and every time I call him, he's like, can't hear you, can't hear you. And Jake, he hasn't, he hasn't built a website that got to a valuation of six billion. Did, didn't I just say I was about to give you an offer and wasn't I rudely interrupted by a couple of parrots down the hill? <laughs> Can we give the mic back to Glenn, please? Thank you very much, Jake. <laughs> I, like I like your style. Oh, Jake, you're good. He's good. He's good. <laughs> so let's give you the offer so these parrots can work out whether they want to get a little bit more serious. Um, $300,000 for 20% of your business. Janine's offered you 28%. I've offered you 25%. Glenn's offered 20%. Naomi, what are you going to do? I'll offer you 300,000 for 18%. <laughs> it's a nice offer. Thank you, Naomi. Steve, what are you going to do? I'm out. I'm not in this. I don't, don't give a toss about vegan stuff. But as a, as a word of advice, 
You've got to make them fight it out for less than 10 per cent. Because you've got a great business, mate. If you're confident doing 600 grand, you're going to go out at a five times multiple. You could just stitch them up for more. Because you're selling equity here, right? It's pretty valuable. Because you've got growth. People who are out, they, they have no voice because they're out. Mate, if you, if, you take, if you take more than 10%, you're doing yourself a disservice. You can't hear them. Stitch these guys up for a single digit. When they're out, they're out. You've done you've so much better than any of these in the same growth rate. Steve, you're not helping him. You're not helping him make a decision here. If he thinks it's so incredible, he's not cracking a check. I don't do vegan. I don't do vegan. Now, he is the classic guy that says, I don't care if it's a widget, if it's a good business, I'll get it. So if he thinks it's so bloody good, he hasn't made you an offer. I haven't tried to rip you off yet either. And you haven't made an offer. I haven't, I haven't tried to rip you off. I don't like this well stuff. Then, I don't, I don't... Well then, shut up. So you have to ignore anyone who's not prepared to put their money where their mouth is. Money talks, right? I'll revise my offer to 20%. 300,000 for 20%. Ah. I'll match Naomi's offer. Eighteen percent. <laughs> I I would be absolutely thrilled to have all four of you as part of my business. No, no you wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> not gonna happen. If you not gonna happen. Jake, is easy. Jake, I categorically say I'm not going to work with them. <laughs> okay. If you accept her valuation, I'll go halves with her. Yes. Andrew, do you think that this is the kind of product that you could push into the, the States? I, I, I love the whole community space. It's scalable, it's online, and I'm absolutely convinced that myself and Janine can help you grow that. So they're teaming up. That's pretty sad. What's so if sad? you really want a good team that knows how to play it, I'm prepared to go with Naomi, who is <laughs> an absolute legend on working with lists of community and making sure you're maximising your opportunities in those communities. I think he said two and a half seconds ago that you wouldn't do a deal with anyone, so you're just a flip-flopper, eh? I'm an opportunist. <laughs> Jake is centering his thoughts after receiving multiple offers for his million-dollar coconut bowl business. So, what's your decision? Naomi and Glenn have teamed up, so have Janine and Andrew. Now, they just have to wait. All right, I'm going to do a deal. Who with? Janine and Andrew. Yay! I am so Thank pleased. You. I'm very excited about what you're doing. Thanks, Janine. Well done. Thank you. Well done. We three are going to kill it. Hey! I like it. <laughs> Food, online, community. Yeah, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. <laughs> Woohoo! Can't believe it. Hey! High five. Hey! I like it. Making money, changing the world. Coconut bowls, eh? Who thought you'd do a deal with coconut know. bowls? And we <laughs> and who thought we'd fight over it? To be honest, my gut was telling me Janine, just because of what she's been able to achieve with Boost Juice, and Andrew with the proven success in America, it was just too much for me to, uh, to say no to. Let's change the world and make money. I like it. <laughs> yes. Next up in the tank is a husband and wife team who are here to prove their business is ready for a shark to sink their teeth into. Hi Sharks, my name's Elisa and this is my husband and business partner Elias. Together we founded Just Jerky, an authentic and all natural beef jerky. Firstly, we're here today seeking your mentorship. We're also here to ask for a $75,000 investment in return for 20% equity share in our company. Beef jerky is a super trendy and loves snack food. However, Australians have not yet had the opportunity to experience a compelling and authentic brand that is a real standout in quality, taste and enjoyment. Just Jerky is currently stocked in over 400 stores across Australia. 
and we're on track to be available in a thousand outlets by the end of financial year. Wow. Our aim over the next four years is to turn that into 5,000 stores whilst also carving out a unique position in the global beef jerky market. So sharks, are you ready to take a bite? My word. Absolutely. Very good, well done. So that's $75,000 for 20%. So you're valuing your company at about 375. Correct. Okay, so can we taste it? Please. Yeah, go for it. Can we right. also see some packaging, please? Yeah, sure thing. I'll grab you well, a few packs. Which is which, though? There's three different types here, so yes. I'm assuming... So the red one is a chilli version. That's right. my favourite. Highly yeah. recommend it. There's an original, which is a garlic um, and pepper flavour. Right. And there's a herb, Dude. which uh, we call it a herb, it's and it's a, a, a honey oh, and coriander-based flavour. That's hot. The chilli one? Yeah. yeah. It's good, though, yeah. but it's hot. <laughs> Do you want much chilli? Yeah, thank you. Oh, yeah. So, how did the idea of making beef jerky here in Australia come around? Yeah, well, it started in Canada, actually. I was ah. over there on a snowboarding trip, and one of my friends who was living over there brought a whole heap of beef jerky up the mountain, and, and none of us had heard of it, so we, we tried it, and we thought this is the greatest thing in the world. So excited about <laughs> it, and on the way back to Australia, I, I said to Elise, I'm going to start a beef jerky business, and, huh. and she... And she laughed at my face and told me I was an idiot. <laughs> yeah, so I laughed at him and went, oh, yeah, no, We're, this is not, it's not going to happen. How did you start to understand how the beef jerky worked? Did you get some cows in the kitchen? Like, did you, like... I started in the kitchen and then uh, built a little factory myself and had Elisa in there, had my mum, my dad, my auntie, my sister. Oh, uh, and then we outgrew that facility pretty quickly and then outsourced manufacture. And now it's made in uh, Brisbane. Um, awesome, it's made in Brisbane. So if you've outgrown your kitchen, you could talk about some pretty healthy numbers then to support your $375,000 valuation. What do you reckon? Yeah, so uh, we're on track for 260,000 turnover this year, and we believe we'll, we'll hit close to 900,000 the year after. Why? Just through all the new stores we keep bringing on and the increase in sell rate through our existing customers, so I'm intrigued because my family invested in jerky production about 20 years ago in North Queensland. Wow. So I know this industry backwards. Yeah, right. Other people are running the business. They never got the traction and it all fell apart. Why is just jerky working? There's, there's, a, there's a big part of timing. So the industry now, people are people looking for more whole food snacks, high protein snacks as well. Yeah. We made sure that the product was all natural ingredients, making sure that the sugar's quite low, it was a healthy alternative, as well as delicious. So you've asked for $75,000. So what's that going to turn into? How are you planning to return that? So over a four year period, we believe we can triple it. That's just focusing on the domestic market. However, we know there's a massive opportunity in the, in the export market. Look, beef jerky is a big market, 2.8 billion, I think, to be precise, in the US. Uh, but I think it's too early stage for me. I don't have a problem with your valuation, but I'm not going to be your partner. I'm out. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, Andrew. This is, this is not the best quality jerk I've seen. Thank, Thank you. you. Awesome. He's in love with your product, which is a good thing. <laughs> You know, I came into Shark Tank years ago, wanted to do a few different sorts of deals. Booze and food, mostly. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm really keen to get in here. I'll give you the 75... I'm, I'm not giving you nothing. I'm going to buy equity from you for 75,000 bucks uh, for 40%. Thank you. Thank you. OK, so we've got one shark in, 75k for 40%. I'm just... I'm going to sit for five minutes, but you do fit in. I'm in organic supermarkets, um, I'm into wellness uh, and food technology. So you fit there, but I'm just not sure. You'd love to have a decisive investor, wouldn't you, rather than someone who sits on the fence all the time? That'd be fantastic. Could you imagine a board meeting with that? I actually think having mentors around you who are considered is yeah. a very valuable thing. What you don't want is somebody who rushes in and rushes out. Because you've made it really clear that you're in this for the long haul, and you do need an investor who's by your side with has the same values, and that's really important. I'm going to make you an offer. $75,000, which is what your request is for, 35%. In other words, I'm trying to undercut this bugger because I think I'd be a better partner. Thank you, Naomi. OK. Are you ready yet? 
No, not yet. Okay. I, I, I'm happy to make an offer. So I'm actually going to match the red balloon. I have a name. <laughs> <laughs> Naomi. So Glenn's in for 35%, 75%. 75k. Thank you so Thank much, you. Glenn. And Janine, where are you at? Um, look, I, I quite like your product. I'm not a, a, a natural um, consumer of it. See, if it was dried carrots or a dried cucumber, she'd be in. Oh, yeah, no, vegan, I would be. If it was vegan, she'd be right there. <laughs> I'll make you an offer. I'll give you $75,000 for 37%. Thank you. And <laughs> obviously, um, I've got more experience in the, the people on the table with regard to the food. OK, we've got Steve in the right corner, 75,000 in the blue corner, 40%. The decisive one, mind you. Naomi. This took them too long. Naomi, 35% for 75,000. Glenn is the same, 75,000 for 35%. And Janine's come in at 75,000 for 37%. Can we take a moment? Yeah, go for it. OK, thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Just remember growth, guys, growth. I've got this, guys. What's that? No, 40. She, she was my body language. If you want it, you have to come to 35. Sucks to be you three, I've got this. Be smart. It's me. It's me. I got it. It's me. No. 50 bucks. Perth couple, Alyssa and Elias, are seeking $75,000 for a 20% stake in their jerky business. Their new take on an old favourite has Glenn, Naomi, Janine and Steve fighting it out. You'd love to have a decisive investor, wouldn't you? I'm trying to undercut this bugger because I think I'd be a better partner. Ooh. It's me. It's me. I got it. 50 bucks. But now they need to decide which shark will be best for their business. What are you thinking? Oh, um, I like Glenn. I think, I think he knows the industry really well. Um, what about Janine? Um, I don't know. I really like Naomi, though. I know. I really, <laughs> She's like I really like Naomi, too. Um, do you have any inclination to work, want to work with Steve? I do. <gasps> yeah, I know. Keeping in mind we're looking for a partner. Yeah. Janine, this is not a boost juice. No. I don't think you're, you're, you're right. It's natural product. Whether it's cow or something else, it's a natural product. What are you feeling? <sighs> You choose. You're the boss. Let's decide out there. Okay. Okay, well, well done. You've had offers from four sharks 40% from Steve, 37% from Janine, and 35% from these two, Glenn and Naomi, which is amazing in its own right. So, would you guys be willing to go to 33%? Who are you talking to? Oh, sorry, the, uh, Glenn and Naomi and Janine, thank you so much for your offers. And, and Steve, thank you so much, but it's just outside the ballpark, just a little bit too far. So you've uh, said no to Steve's 40%? No, thank you very much, and okay. hopefully we can sell you lots of jerky. <laughs> but come on, you, you, you came in here and you basically just said, no, I don't want you. I mean, that, that is... You've got to do that better in the future, right? You, you, you cannot do that to people, right? OK. Because I could have been back in. OK. To be quite blunt, you said, no. Nah. Oh, I'm so sorry. I think that I'm was really a mistake. That that was, he, he did not intent. intend to do that. I'm, I'm really sorry about that. He did oh, not Oh, you're a lovely man. He's... he's don't even worry about it. He's very oh, sensitive sweet. young man. Seriously, he is the most sensitive shark on the show. So Steve's out. I'm out. Janine, would you be interested in 33% at all? Where I was with 37%, I actually thought that was actually quite reasonable considering where you've put in and how early your business is. Yep. And also the long journey you've got ahead of you. I'm staying at 37. Thank you. Thank you. Naomi? The reason why I went to 35% is because I wanted to give an extra 5% over Steve because I thought I'd be a better partner. But actually, his valuation made all the sense in the world to me. So I'm also not going to adjust from 35%. Thank you. So if your numbers stack up in due diligence, I'll go you 33%. Yep. Who did you really want? Who do you think can add the most value to your business? I... 
teachers. Um, thank you so much for your offers. As I said, we didn't mean to offend. Thank you to Janine for your offer um, and for all the feedback, really valuable feedback. Um, Naomi, also, thank you so much. I'll go to 35. <laughs> That's what we love. Decisive. That's it. Sharks. Beautiful. <laughs> Making this difficult. Um, I'm. Thank you so much, Janine. All right, we'll do a deal. Deal at thirty-five. I think we'll have to go with Glenn yeah. at thirty-three oh, percent. <laughs> Good decision. Elias, thank you. Great Thanks work. Great work. Thank you Thanks so much. Wow. Congratulations. Thanks, Thanks guys. guys. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you. Much. Thank, thank, you. Much. thank you. Thank you. Bye. Well done. When she said, I'll have Glenn, it was like pain. I'll have Glenn! <laughs> because they didn't really want you, Glenn. Well, you hoped they were hungry. Yeah. There was, was a feeding frenzy over you. Absolutely nerve wracking. You got a, a bit of shock. Gee, Steve snapped a bit at you, didn't he? Oh, I feel bad. Sorry, bad. <laughs> I, I really like Steve. <laughs> but it was definitely Glenn. He he was all in. He was feet first, wasn't yes, he? Yes, yes. And he was fighting for us. All right. Next into the tank, a husband and wife team hoping to talk their way into a deal. Hello Sharks, my name's Luke. My name's Vanessa and today we are seeking a $300,000 investment for 15% share of our product, TalkSafe. TalkSafe is a safety switch designed to bolt onto hydraulic torque tools. Hydraulic torque tools are used in a wide variety of industries, uh, mining, construction, oil and gas. They're basically used to tighten up any large nut or bolt that's too tight to be done up with ordinary hand tools. A rattle gun, mate, basically, is it? Or... Yeah, it's like hydraulic driven. Yeah. Typically, two people use hydraulic torque tools, and that's where hand crush injuries can happen. 38% of workplace injuries are hand related, so looking at ways to make it safer. And I want to see this made an industry standard. Where are you guys from? Uh, Perth. Oh, Western Australia, great. Awesome. So, I'll show you. Yeah, great. So, this gold section is a hydraulic torque wrench, and the silver section is torque safe. I've invented a silver bit on top. So Luke, just make it easy for me, why did you come up with this product? I um, basically had one of my workmates put his hand crushed by one. I work as a mechanic in the mining industry and over the last 10 years there's been quite a large amount of hand crush injuries with this type of tooling. The problem with hand crush injuries, if you're out on a remote mine site, there's no medical attention apart from the EMO on site. So they have to get a flying doctor in. Yeah. You have to get emergency flown out. There's huge medical bills, downtime, surgery. It can be quite expensive and a slow process for rehabilitation. How do you get your hand crushed by one? Steve, go and show us. All right, need a hand? <laughs> hand yeah. crushing. We do have some tomatoes to do a demonstration on what can happen to your hand. So what happens is it typically uses two people to use a tool. So one person will be holding this tool, placing it on bolts, and then you're relying on a, a second person to operate the pump. Human error can happen. So I might have my hands on this tool, go to put it on a bolt, stumble, and they press the button, so if your hand's anywhere on this tool when it accidentally gets turned on, it just crushes your hands. Ouch. So I'll put a tomato in there. Stay back, Steve. So if, if I hold the lever in... <laughs> can't work. <laughs> That's what happens. So you control when the force comes on? Yeah. You are totally in control of events? Yeah, you gain gotcha. control over the tool. OK. It's a safety switch. Good stuff. So right now, that little piece that you put in onto the tool doesn't exist? No, this is the only safety valve in the world. But there's any nothing equivalent? Equipment. Nothing at all. OK. Where are your patents registered? Patent pending in Australia and international and the name TalkSafe has been trademarked. Who's your customer? Mining industry, oil and gas, construction, anywhere in the world that you'd do up a large nut or bolt. Then could you explain where you've got your $2 million valuation, please? We've got a distribution contract in place, which is set for 800 units a year. Cool. Basically, if we achieve 800 units a year with the profit margins based on a 12-month turnover, 
basically the valuation. So you have a distribution agreement for 800 units a year. So can you go through the economics of, of cost and profit and et cetera? It costs around five and five and a half thousand dollars wholesale. And the cost to make? Around three thousand dollars. Like, like, and that'll come down if you get serious. On about... large production, it's got potential to come down. There's about fifty percent profit margin. Do you make them in Australia, mate? Australian made. At the moment, we've got it set up through the distributor and they're going to approach companies. They've already got contacts with 15 mining companies already they do business with. So they're going to approach all of those. I'm sitting here, I'm going, the business model sounds fantastic, but I don't know where I can help you. So I think there's a better partner for you in these chairs than me, but only for that reason. I think you've done a great job and, and hopefully it takes off so you can save a lot of injuries. But for me, for this one, I'm out. Well done. Lots of people think about ideas, but they don't actually do anything about it. You know, people who are driven by passion change the world, and that's what you're doing. I'm not the right investor for you. I'm out. Luke and Vanessa, I, I have no doubt you've got the application, where it's going to be used and the addressable market covered. You've got relationships and contacts, you've already got mining companies helping you. Mm. I'm in. 300k for 30%. 30 per cent. 30% of your company, so that's double the equity that you ask for. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll let you know how I'm feeling. Well done. I mean, I think we all see the utility in this. Our oh, HS is massive. Oh, no one deserves to be injured or, or you know, worse at work. So this is really good. So I'm just going to keep thinking and I'm wondering what Andy's up to, actually. I've got a lot of faith in your product. I think there's a market. And I love your passion and intention. No disrespect. You don't have a track record in running a business like this. And it's a complicated business. Inventing a product, solving a problem is one thing, making money out of it is another. What I'm struggling with is, frankly, should you be the people to run the business? Or should you be the people to make sure the product's integrity is right and make money out of it as an inventor as you should? I'm asking who should control the company. Austin has invented a device to reduce hand crush injuries on mining and construction sites. Luke and his wife Vanessa want $300,000 for 15% of their business. Glenn has made an offer, but Andrew has doubts. Frankly, should you be the people to run the business? Or should you be the people to make sure the product's integrity is right and make money out of it as an inventor as you should? Would you sell 60% of your company and leave yourself with 40% so you're not really controlling the company? Look, I want to see it made an injury standard. I want it to reduce injuries and I believe in what we're doing. If we get the right help behind us, if that's what it took, I would be prepared. That's about as cool an answer we've ever had. He's had some pretty interesting offers and he's pretty cool up there. And he's just flunked out on the floor. How about we buy 60% of your company from you and you just have a bat at an cool. eyelid, mate. <laughs> you know? I think he's cool hand, Luke. <laughs> Luke and Vanessa, there's a lot of talk going on without a lot of offers coming up. Yeah. I, I believe in you. Simple yeah. as that. You only half believe in him. You gave him a half discount, mate. But the reality is, I'm happy with what you've told us. I'm backing you. Thank you. OK. So if you get bored with them procrastinating, just, just say yes to them if you want. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to make you an offer. 450000 for 50%. Sounds like a good deal. And I'll partner with Steve and Glenn to get this off the ground. I help you with the States, and these two guys help you in Australia. Because you'll need some domestic help, you need US help. There's quite a lot of work to be done here.
I'll try with Andy on that one. I'm OK with it. So you can do 450,000 for 50% with the three of us, or you can do 300,000 for 30% with Glenn on his own. This is a very rare situation where we have deals at this scale on Shark Tank. You're in a very unique and special position, but you've got to make the call. Would you be interested in 50% of 500,000? With the three of you. Negotiating. I think the most important thing is the 50 per cent. All right, mate. I'm in. Yeah, we're prepared to do that. We've got a deal. OK. Oh, Good job. Thank you well, so much. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. Hey, well done, mate. Right. See if we can get this thing out there. Yeah, thank you. Hey, really oh, sorry. Good job. We don't want too many hands to end up like that tomato. <laughs> Thanks very much. Make those dreams See real. <laughs> It's exciting to have three of those guys just to be able to help and mentor us and see where it takes us. And get our product into the global market. Yeah. 23 years ago, I came up with this idea. It's in this briefcase and it's going to blow the sharks away. Next in the tank, a Queensland inventor with a box of tricks he hopes will put an end to peak hour traffic blues. Hello Sharks, my name is Adam Riley. Today I'm asking for $20,000 for 10% of my business. My business is light, compact, personal, electric vehicles. In Australia alone, over $80 billion is spent on transport annually. 6.5 million people commute to work. Over 28% of all Commutes are under, 20, under 10 kilometres and without passengers. Imagine owning a vehicle that is as small as this briefcase, so you can easily use it in conjunction with public transport, and when you get to your destination, you can easily put it into a locker or put it next to your desk. This is my personal electric vehicle. How cool is that? Oh, oh, oh. oh. All right, mate. <laughs> mate, I want one. Right. <laughs> That's fantastic. That is amazing. Yeah. Well, well done. Impressive. Very right. impressive. Very cool. It uses a 2.4G wireless hand control. Can travel at speeds at 35 kilometres an hour. It has regenerative braking, so not only stops easy, it also puts power back into the battery. It has forward and reverse modes. Sorry, can I have a go? Yes. <laughs> oh, come on. So we're all going to line Sorry, up. How could you not? So how do you work it? It doesn't work in high heels, obviously. No, nah, bugger the heels. <laughs> so go forward, you just push this in. <laughs> and just turn perfect. <laughs> perfect. <laughs> Adam, how long have you had the, the board in a practical use? Uh, about two years I've had this design. It's been working for two years? I've had five prototypes and this is the final prototype. Why do we not see electric skateboards all around the place? Or do we and I just don't know? They're getting very, very popular the last couple of years. Um, I built my first one 23 years ago. You built your first one 23 years yeah. ago? How old were you then? Uh, 15. OK. How do your traditional electric skateboards differ from this electric skateboard? This is the first affordable electric skateboard. In the world? In the world, as far as I'm aware. Did you paint it? Yes. And that's what the patent covers, the foldable aspect? Yes. And what do you anticipate to sell them for? 1199 What do you make them for, mate? $500. Wow. How many have you made? Uh, 150 in the production at the moment. So you, have, so you haven't sold any? People have um, put orders in already. Pre-orders? So they're yeah. not sold yet. Tell me a bit about your background. By the way, we also need to hear what kind of vitamins you're on, because you still only look about 16. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much. Give us a bit of a feel for you as a person. 
I'm a qualified chef by trade. A chef? A chef. Wow. I used to own a restaurant as well, and I used to have 30 people working for me. So you've run a small business before? I have, yes. Oh, good. So you've asked us for $20,000. How are we going to use that? $20,000, we're actually to get it to the expos. There's, yeah, marketing. You, you basically want some airfares and share this thing off, right? Yes. 20 grand, it's not much. It's not going to get you very far, is it? If all of a sudden you got an order for 100,000 of these, what would you do? Um, bank plans. No surprise there. Well, actually, the plan is I, I got 150 coming in and then sell them, and then, yeah, I can, with that money, I can buy another 500. With that money, I can buy another 1,000. The technical term for that's an excellent answer is cash flow. I'm going to fund this from cash flow, and that's an excellent answer. Adam, I think, um, I think you're amazing. And you're very understated in your approach. I'm getting the impression there's a lot more to you than meets the eye. I, I don't think $20,000 is enough. Um, I'm not sure how big this market is, but I, I do spend a lot of time in the States, and I know the skateboard market there is just huge. And I, I would, I'd certainly like to help you get this into the United States. And obviously, by definition, if you get it into that market, you'll get it into a lot of other markets, including Australia. Yes. So I'm going to offer you $20,000 for 25% equity, but I'm going to offer you another $80,000 loan to be drawn down to quickly expand the business and buy stock. And that loan can be repaid as the business can afford it, say, over the first couple of years. So I'm in. OK. Are you from the other sharks? So, Adam, I'm going to be really straight up with you and not look for anything too complicated. So what I'm going to offer you is $20,000 for 15% of your business. I'll make you an offer. The offer is $20,000 for 10% which is what you've asked for. In addition to that, a $50,000 loan and a royalty which is $20 per board back to myself for the first 1,000 boards. Um, I'll put something forward to you. Yep. I like having Andrew involved because of his American connections and I think that because he lives there that that connection is important. So I'd actually like to play with you and Andrew. I'd like another 25%. I'm happy to split the loan with him uh, and go 40-40. But that would mean, collectively, we would own half the business. So Adam's got to decide whether he thinks he needs to sell that extra 25% equity for that extra capital. Steve. He's got some great offers. He really has. I'm with you, Adam. I'm with you, Adam. Steve. Um, I, I, I like you. I think that, you, you, as Andrew said, you're exceptionally understated. I think there's a lot more to you that we haven't discovered yet, which is good. But. I'm going to make it easy for Adam. I think there's some great offers there that I'm probably not going to add a great deal to. I wish you all the best. I want to buy one. Yeah. I'd love to talk to you about some sort of customised, sort of cool version, to be honest. Yeah. So if you want some advice, just ask me, because I can just tell you what I really <laughs> think. But getting two sharks behind you would be fantastic. Having a dual presence, Australia and the US, is, is ideal. 50% yeah. is something you have to get comfortable with. I can't really give up 50% for that type of money. Would you be interested in doing 15% each? You're negotiating. I like that, Adam. No. Where are you with me and Naomi? Are we out of the picture? Um, we've made offers too. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you, yeah. I'd like to have two sharks. If Naomi wants to join in, I'm happy to do it with Naomi. I, I want you to have the best for you. So if you guys went together, what percentage would you use one? I said 15%. And you said 10, so that makes 25% combined. 
plus the 50k loan. $50,000 loan and $20 royalty for the first thousand boards. So do you understand that offer there, mate? Yeah. Excellent. And we've got here with Janine and with Andrew, putting in $40,000 for 50%. And if you want to, I'll still go alone at 25%. Oh, and, and a lone and a lone wolf, Andrew Banks. What would you be more comfortable going by yourself or going with Janine? See, generally I'd rather go on my own, and if I was just thinking of me and getting a return, that's what I'd do. But I'm also thinking of you. I wouldn't object to Janine coming in because of her Australian infrastructure. Yeah. Uh, but that's a decision you've got to make. But you're the person that's giving up the most ground on that kind of deal. So it's just something you need to be clear about. Yeah. I'd be happy to work with you and Janine, but not on that percentage. I'd be more happy with like 15%. So you would prefer to do a 30% deal with the two of us and a 25% deal with just Andrew? Yes. Right. What do you think? I think we're both worth 40%. And on that basis, plus the loans, you've got access to $80,000 minimum. The loan doesn't really bother me too much. If you don't want to do the loan, I'm happy with that. Well, we do want to do the loan. The reason I want to do the loan is I want the loan to power the value of my equity. You will get your that money I'm... back quicker if you do well, the loan, Well, I yes. think we're just going to accelerate your business. and We yeah. can't hang around. We've got to get this product made. Yeah. If this is the number one Christmas present next year, this is all academic, Adam. Yeah. We're just planning whether we should be in a three-storey building or a five-storey building for head office. Nay, office <laughs> looking better. What's going on here, John? <laughs> I think we're out in the cold. Oh, are we, if so, Adam, are, are we out? I'm still discussing, I'm still discussing. At the moment, you're, you're focusing all your attention up there, and I'm on the verge of stepping out because we're not getting any love at this end of the <laughs> No love tank. at all. I think the American market, if you have um, American contacts, or you've got... I licensing. have no American contacts in the electrical skateboard area, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. Having said that, if this is as good a product as you say it is, and we think it is, a phone call and a connection to people in this space is going to get attention. With your offer, you said you want $20 per board for the first thousand boards. Yes, that's correct. Would you consider not doing the $20 per board? No, I think there's enough risk involved, Adam, that needs a bit of de-risking. Adam, time is ticking by. It's time to make money. Would you two guys consider 35%? Your counter-offer is 35% for $40,000 yes. for the two of us. Yes. Is that, are you, are you going to accept that offer? Yes. Well done. Oh, yeah. <laughs> thanks very much. What a negotiation. Thanks very much. And thanks so much for your offers, guys. <laughs> what a negotiation. <laughs> thanks very much. Right. Yeah, Thank you. Take care. Well, well done. There you go, Adam. Oh, that was intense. <laughs> that was intense. Andrew has got awesome connections. He's the shark I wanted. And Janine's added bonus. So we're really excited. It's going to move the, the company forward so much quicker. <laughs>